Welcome to this DMP Challenge Feedback Video Academy series where we're going to be looking at the house relighting. Because the Matte Painting for Filmmakers project is all about skill building, these feedback videos are broken into three sections. First we're going to be looking at some reference photography. So you know this house that we've been trying to relight? I actually have some photography of that same house under the lighting conditions that we've been trying to achieve. So we're going to be using that in our observe section of this video. Then we're going to evaluate your work, seeing if it holds up to what we've observed in our reference photography. And lastly, I'm going to be teaching you some relighting techniques in the demonstrate section. So make sure you stay until the very end and let's get going. So I have some photography here of some houses that we are going to pick out the visual cues that make these images look photo real. So when you're talking about lighting, there are some things right away that you can observe. And like in this image, the shadow direction is all falling in the same direction. And that's because the sun is infinitely far away. That means all shadows are essentially perpendicular to each other. So all of these are headed in the same direction. Also, as we're observing these images, we can tell that there are two different kinds of shadows. So you can see the shadow uh, right here on the house, but you also see a shadow underneath this lip right here. And so there are two different kinds of shadows that are going on here. It's the ambient occlusion shadow, which is the blocking of the ambient light by the relative closeness of objects. So right where you see creases and seams and things like that, it's naturally going to be darker than the blocking of the uh, direct sunlight. So down here, we see a blocking of the direct sunlight. And then we also see that up here in these little creases and all on these windows, anywhere where two edges are meeting together, you're going to see a little bit of that ambient occlusion shadowing. And also we can see that there are some areas that should be in shadow, but are actually brighter because of bounce light. So if you look at this side of the house versus this side of the house, um, this side is brighter over here and it has this warm color to it, something that we don't see over here. And that's because this road right here bends. And over here, you see a bunch of grass, but over on this side, the road bends around and because of all of that, and it's getting direct sunlight in this area here, it's bouncing off this road and up into the house here. And so that's why you see that slight warming of the shadow and the brightening of that value. Something also to keep in mind is the relationship between the local value of the material and the shadow value. So this house right here, it's a painted wood. It's white, and so it has a very bright local value. And then when the shadow falls across it, it has a relatively darker value for the shadow. But still, this shadow color or value is brighter than uh, this bright side of this other house that has a darker local value of the material of this dark wood. And so all of these relationships of light and shadows are relative to each other and the local value of the material that the shadow is falling across. Also something to observe from this photo is that there is a color difference between the light side and the shadow side. The light side is getting direct sunlight, which is going to typically be a warm light from the sun. And then the shadow side is going to be filled in with the sky and the brightness that comes with the sky. So it's all bouncing light into this area. And so typically the shadow side is going to be a bit cooler. And that's just a general art principle is that your light side is warm and your shadow side is typically cool. So you can see from uh, this image here also that there's a difference between hard shadows and soft shadows. So we have here on the grass, these are relatively hard shadows here and also on uh, this house right here. And that's because it's a clear day. There's nothing that's obscuring the direct sunlight from the sun and it's coming down and it's creating hard shadows because these are hard shapes. 
okay? So you can do, to get soft shadows, you can do one or two things. You can have a softness of the shape, which is like these leaves right here. These leaves are semi-transparent. They're um, pretty far away from the ground. And so they get kind of diffused out and they, their shadows become soft here. Um, but uh, you can also, let's say on this house right here, these have hard shadows. But if you were to obscure the direct sunlight with some clouds, it would diffuse that light and now these shadows we become soft. So you can have within the same scene, based on the object type, if it be hard or soft, it can dictate what kind of shadow it is, or depending on the type of light that's lighting the scene. If it's diffuse, then you get soft. If it's direct, then you're gonna get hard shadows. So to wrap up this section, I wanted to show you a couple of images of the actual house that you've been working on to relight, to have a direct lighting scenario. And uh, you can see from these two images that it is kind of the accumulation of everything that we've talked about up till this point. You have a bit of a warm side of the house and a cool side of the house. You have some uh, bounce light that's going up into this area here. You have some hard shadows that are coming from these hard edges of the house and soft shadows that are coming from the leaves that are a bit farther away. These ones that are really close have a, a harder shadow, and these ones that are farther away have a softer shadow. You have a ambient inclusion shadow up here under this lip, and you also have another direct light shadow that's coming down and casting on uh, the surface of this house and going around the contours of all of these different shapes on the facade of this house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these images available to you so that when you go back through and rework your house based on the feedback that you're getting from this video that you actually have some reference that uh, you can use to match your lighting to. So with this reference and this feedback and the experience that you've already gained from going through this exercise, I'm confident that you're really gonna be able to nail the relighting of this house. So let's go ahead and take a look at everyone's submissions. I have compiled a, uh, an evaluation list, one through eight here. We're gonna do like we typically do you're going to self-evaluate your work. I have put your work into these individual categories, which I feel like represents one of the biggest needs for improvement for your particular image, or your image might best represent one of these particular categories. So you may have multiple issues. You're gonna to need to self-evaluate all of those issues start out with the 10 points that we typically do and then subtract points for all the issues that you have. So let's go ahead and put this to the side here. The first category we are going to hit is this one here, following direction. And I include this in every single DMP challenge because it's really important to follow the direction, uh, especially if you're at a visual effects studio, you've been given tasks, you have to hit those tasks and your performance is measured on whether or not or how successfully you've hit those tasks. So the first one I have here um, is uh, Wu Peng Zhu. I assume that uh, they're from China, so I uh, I give a bit of allowance for a um, a bit of a language barrier or something that was lost in translation. But uh, the lighting direction is coming from this side and not from this side. That kind of uh, thing, if you were to do that at a visual effects studio, would um, just result in you having to redo the work that you've done. So. Um, so that is the first category there. The second category here is having consistent shadow density. So um, here we have uh, Herman Gill. Um, this is his image here and uh, the image that he was using um, here as reference. And so what I'm seeing here is that there's, uh, there's some really, really dark shadows here almost just like black here um, on the shadow side. And I can see here that there are some blackness to some of this, 
but it's not black on the uh, the lighter color of things. It's only on these really dark tiles um, on the roof, which I think are darker than what we have up here. So I don't think that even on this side that that kind of light uh, darkness is justified. And uh, on the light side, we have an inconsistency. So this is super dark, even though the local color of this house is light. So, um, so I think we have some inconsistency with the shadow density of that. So here, uh, Thorn, we have um, uh, here the same issue as well, where it's really, really dark. Um, this is his reference image. You can see here how bright that is up underneath uh, in these dark areas here. So I think this is even darker than what would be justified. This is feeling really nice in here, actually. And so I would say uh, I would say this is good. This, this level right here is good. That should be kind of brought across here uh, with that. Uh, we have uh, Cheng's, Cheng's Cook. Uh, right here and um, with theirs they have a bit of the same issue where we're really seeing into this area here it's really quite bright but then it's really dark and it's dark in here I just think that there would be a little more even and then over here it's just super black uh, right there so all these shadows are different values and so I think uh, you even out those shadows you'd have a lot better uh, uh, look on that. Here's uh, Victor. And uh, this one here, we have a nice uh, solid shadow, direct shadow shape, but then over here it's really dark. We'd expect something over here as well, right? If this is in shadow, this is in shadow, why would this get an ambient occlusion shadow, but this not over here? So have ambient occlusion shadow consistent all the way through. And then, uh, and then have the direct uh, light shadow there and then lift it up so that they're not so black. Like in your reference image here, I don't see even anything that's like super, super black. Uh, and, and if it is approaching a really dark color, the local color to this house is uh, this bluish green color um, and uh, not a white color. So white is going to you know, show a lot into the shadows, much more than what this house is right there. Okay, so the next category that I have here, John, Patrick, um, we have uh, this category is the soft versus hard shadows. So like on uh, this house right here, we have a bit of a, um, this is more of a harder shape right here. If you look at, I'm just going to zoom in, you can see um, that it's it's pr pretty much in a straight line. And this is the dark side, this is the light side, and the transition, there's not really a long transition between those two. But when you get under here, this kind of merges into this shadow right here. And so um, we have the transition from light to dark, it goes from here all the way to here. So you have uh, like a really long transition, probably about the width of that. And then the transition on this is, uh, is very small. <clears throat> so even though it's a light shadow, um, it's, I would still consider that a hard shadow because there's not a transition between the two uh, on that. So that's where I, I would say we have an inconsistency of the... Um, of the shadow shapes. So we have hard and soft uh, right there. Uh, this one with uh, Pascal, I think this is kind of the same issue that we were talking about before where it's kind of hard, but then this shadow down here has really soft um, you know, transition from dark to light down there and also here. Uh, and I can see what you were doing you're trying to leverage the ambient occlusion shadow that was already in there. You're like, hey, why don't I just keep that? Um, but, uh, but then if this is going to be how diffuse your shadow shape is, that same kind of diffusion should go up across here. Uh, it should be uh, consistent uh, with those. So, um, so the next one here, Ahmed, I have, uh, if we take a look here, 
this is a pretty, you know, on this side, you're not really expecting a shadow to go on this side here because the light's coming in and your and your shadow shape is going that way. So, so you have a really soft shadow right here, which may be actually in the original image that you would have to take out um, if this is going to be your lighting scenario. So, uh, so I think that that this value and this value are just about the same. Uh, so this is pretty dark. This is pretty dark, except for this one has a hard shadow and this one has a soft shadow. So um, there's some inconsistencies there, but really um, this should be probably gotten rid of completely uh, altogether. Uh, also, you can see up uh, as far as shadow consistency, how the, you can see into the shadow really well but then right here you can't see into that really well, so there's inconsistency. I think this feels really good, and I feel like this needs some help up here. And actually, if you were to fix this right here, you'd, I think, have a pretty good image. Um, you would need some shadow on the roof as well, on these chimneys, um, and maybe on uh, the grass down here. Okay, so the next category I have is natural lighting. So... Uh, I did give you the raw image, and so you had more control over the natural um, uh, part of, you could relight, you could tint it, you had a lot of control over the color of the image. And so I have uh, this image right here for uh, copper, uh, Cheng. And uh, so this feels a little bit surreal. And I think that that's coming from uh, it being a bit too saturated in some colors. So like you have this really blue sky. See, I, I, I think this is where it's coming from. You, you have a really blue sky here, um, and then you have kind of a desaturated color here, um, and it seems inconsistent. So I'm, I'm, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm actually covering up with my hand to hide the sky up here on top because I'm just checking to see if, uh, yeah, as soon as I hide that sky, this image becomes, looks a lot more natural. So I think it's the inclusion of the sky and how it's really saturated and you have kind of a desaturated scene. So you look here, you compare this sky to this sky. This sky is very desaturated. So I think that's what's making uh, your image look kind of bizarre is because of uh, the sky. And, and everything, you know, if you do plein air painting or anything like that, they say you key to the sky. It's all about the sky. Um, uh, the, the sky makes everything have a similar look to it because they're all underneath the same lighting conditions. Um, and so if you take out the sky and put something else in there that's completely different, it's going to make your image look kind of wacky. So um, uh, Carolyn... Uh, here. So for this one, I think is a bit of the same issue where you have a really saturated blue sky with a desaturated foreground. Um, I don't think you need to go that desaturated on the plate here or this image. I think it would be nice to see more of that color coming through and, um, uh, and uh, or you can desaturate the sky. So also the desaturatedness of these makes it almost look like an old photo um, as opposed to like a real place. Um, so uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go into uh, that direction. So when I look at your reference image, this still has quite a bit of color um, in these areas here. And so I think this represents having more color um, than what your image does uh, down here. Um, also, um, uh, Gulio here, you have um, this kind of like really bright light coming in here. That's a little bit more, um, uh, it's so bright that it feels like um, it would be something that would be from the sun, but it's so diffuse that it feels like the, it's coming from a local source. So like if it looks like there's off screen here, there's these really big hot lights. 
that's blasting down on this. Um, and, and like I said, that's because of, of you have this really hot light, but then there's no hard shadows. Like you don't have any hard shadows here and it's kind of diffuse and kind of blowing it out. And it feels like the light is kind of localized in this little area here and it's not affecting the background trees or anything like that. So it does feel like it's kind of in this area, constrained to this area. Uh, so like there's a light here that's off screen that's, that's kind of uh, brightening up this house. So, which makes it feel like it's not a natural lighting situation uh, there. So I would pull definitely pull back on uh, this light here. Okay, so our next uh, category, we have shadow accuracy. Before we talked about how that the sun is infinitely far away and that the shadows uh, should, be, um, should be following that direction. So just right off, um, if we take a look here, these shadows are, are quite nice. However, if you, you can see here that it's going straight across there and it's coming straight across there. If you, uh, I'm actually just going to pop back to our image here, um, so you can see, you can see what this looks like when the light is falling across uh, that image uh, there. Excuse me here for a second. So you can see that it's going up and down. All of these have shape to them, and you can see how it goes across that shape. So when you have uh, this image and you have such a straight line going across everything, it makes it feel like a fake shadow because um, it's, not, it doesn't, it's not showing the shape underneath it. So uh, that's one aspect of having correct shadow accuracy here in uh, Category 5. Um, this one here, uh, you can see there's a bit of an inconsistency because there's a, um, there's a light like this overhang is quite big. And so the light would shine down here on uh, this and it wouldn't be showing this little corner here. Um, it would be completely in shadow. And then this has kind of a, a, an extreme angle to it. And so um, I think this is quite, you can look at that overhang, that's a pretty big overhang. And if it was hanging out from here to here, you wouldn't have that little thing in there. So, um, so yeah, so it is important. It'll, it'll throw off, visually it'll throw you off uh, quite badly if you are, uh, don't have consistent shadow direction. And I would say that this is not the correct shadow direction here or, uh, or over here. The next one is uh, Orly. So uh, here we have um, where on this side, in particular, this is what I was looking at right here, is that the light is coming down, and so it is putting these areas in shadow, And uh, but on this side here, we wouldn't see any more shadow here because of the direct light, because this whole thing would be in shadow completely. So, uh, and it goes out too far, and it follows this line too much to be a, an occlusion shadow, so this looks like directional shadow light, but there's no light being hit uh, on this side at all. And so also I think that this is, uh, um, that might be fine over there. So yeah, so it's mostly uh, this area right there. Okay, so our next section is uh, shadow color. So I have uh, Carlos here. We have on uh, this image here for the reference image, uh, this is warm and this is cool. So, uh, and I don't see that same thing that's going on here. This is pretty cool and this is really cool. So, uh, I would warm this up, uh, and, uh, keep this cool over here so that you have a nice balance between the cool, the cool light and the warm light. And even though this image kind of tends towards cool, uh, all over, you still get a relative sense of how warm that light is. And then for Nicholas here, we have a bit of the opposite problem where it's not all cool, this is all warm. I think this could uh, become, you could put some cooler colors in here 
Nicholas so that you kind of have a nice uh, contrast. Any Anytime that everything tends towards warm, then it starts to look a little monochromatic. And uh, if you're putting some cool in there, it makes it uh, have a, a bit of a nicer uh, balance um, and gives us kind of what we would expect here to have some cooler colors in the shadows. So Andrew here um, has uh, this image here, which actually I think looks like um, has a warm side here and a cool side here, which is good. I, I like and I think it matches the image here. However, there's a shadow shape under this lip and a shadow shape under this lip where you have uh, this being one color, this being another color. So especially when you see it right here where it starts to, you see these two right up against each other, really this should be the same color um, through here because it's all in the shadow. So even in your image here, this one here and this one over here, they both, they're on opposite parts of the house. They have the same uh, color for both of those. Um, so that's Andrew. So this one is uh, Mandeep's, and uh, this is a little bit of the same issue, not so extreme, but you get a little bit of a cooler sense here, but this is really, really red uh, right here, and then the same connection point through here. These two are different colors. They should be the same color consistently, um, and uh, I think this could even be a little more cool uh, than what you have. Okay, so uh, now that we are on uh, a different category, our seventh category, which is contrast, um, I have uh, Julio here that uh, it's a nice image, but overall I think represents, uh, and this isn't specific to the lighting of this house, it's just to the presentation of the image. I think that this has a lot of contrast to it. Um, I see less contrast in this image here than what you have. Your darks are really, really dark, and it looks kind of crunchy and stuff, and so that look, I think, is, uh, is undesirable. So I would not, um, I would pull back on the contrast in this image and even it out a little bit so that you can, you know, match this uh, a bit more uh, to what you've got here, okay? And then uh, the last... Uh, section that we have here in eight is the exposure. So here uh, we have Sergey. He's using these images here, but this is his uh, his final image. I think this represents an overexposure of uh, of this image. It gets really kind of um, uh, like kind of bleached out, and so like even when we're looking at um, our image here. And this is clearly in the light, but we we still are uh, maintaining some shadow color um, that is uh, here and there that's dark, and even under each one of these ledges. So if you blast the whole thing out and uh, you lose a lot of that information, it's just it's kind of overexposed. So um, here at Nathan's. Uh, I think also represents that, um, where the whole the whole image feels like it's lifted. Um, and when I say lifted, it's like taking up the bottom, the darks, and lifting it up. And I see that's actually this image that you have here also is kind of lifted. And so uh, I would, uh, it's possible that you had a color correction on top of your reference image too. If that's the case, then you're lifting your reference image and your image at the same time, which you probably don't want to do. But uh, but I would look like this image, I think, represents something that's too flashed, too lifted in the darks. So I think on this, you can introduce some more of those darker colors uh, in there um, so it doesn't all feel so flashed on there. Uh, here, uh, Ishan. Um, this one here has kind of gone through this colorized kind of feel where it feels very monochromatic. We've lost some of that color information and it feels a bit overexposed. Uh, and Anthony here, um, this is probably a bit too dark uh, where everything is kind of crunchy, which means it has it's kind of high, high contrast and it's a bit underexposed. 
uh, on that. So uh, really, you know, when we're looking at it, this image right here, I think represents a really nice exposure. Um, we're getting some really dark things and some light things, um, but I think it's, it's looking good. So if I were to uh, grab this and uh, pull it into, um, uh, into here, and if I wanted to uh, like kick the exposure up on this image, then uh, we could, you could see that's probably not the best look right there. And so that's kind of what you're getting where you're starting to blow things out, which is not, uh, not really a desirable look. All right, so that concludes our evaluate section of this video. I hope that uh, you got a lot out of that. It's kind of like um, when you're in dailies and you are part of a team that's all working on the same sequence and when the VFX supervisor or your lead um, or the director or art director is giving notes on someone else's shot, like the shadows are too dark here or whatever, then you can actually directly apply some of those notes to your work if you're finding that they're similar things. So actually being in this group setting and looking at all of these shots together, you know, the things that other people have done, you can apply to your own work. So let's go ahead and look at our next section, which is the demonstration. So what we're going to do in this demonstration is take a look at a solution for the biggest issue that I think most people faced when doing this house. And that was the doubling up of the shadows when you're putting in your shadow shape here that you make this dark here and then it makes this really dark like almost black. And so we have to figure out a way to be able to add this shadow here because the light's coming in this direction and not making this too dark. So we have a couple different ways of doing that. And uh, one way is to open up the raw image and see what we can get out of the raw image because the raw image has quite a bit of range to it. And so there might be some color information under there. So let's go ahead and zoom in and see if we can bring back some of that information. So the first thing that we could do is just expose up and see what we can see. So if I've exposed up all the way um, and I can still see stuff under there, that means it's pretty black and there's no longer a ton of information there. So, um, so if we zero that out, if we uh, lift up the shadows, you can see it gets really grainy under there uh, and I could lift up the blacks there. Um, it starts to lift it, but then it affects the whole image that way. So I'm not able to isolate this area and lift it up so that it evens it out very well. So um, I think that that's not going to be a solution. That may be the solution in a lot of cases when you're working with raw images to adjust it in the camera raw editor within Photoshop. Uh, I think in this case, this is just really, really too black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of the edge off by uh, lifting the shadows to a point where I think that it's still okay, like it won't break the image. So I'm gonna lift that up somewhere right around there. And then I'm gonna commit this and I'm gonna say open this image. Okay, so with our image here, um, uh, what we could do is we could, uh, you know, take this and um, try to lift it with an adjustment layer. And if we did that, then we're kind of getting the same issue there is that there's not a lot of information under there anymore. Um, and so when we lift it, it's not going to have the same effect. But then you also have to match your gradient uh, to this. And so it kind of has to be uh, kind of perfect. That's, um, pro that's another way to deal with it, but I don't think it would be very effective. I think what you have to do um, in this case is actually replace this section underneath uh, this roof here. And the best way to do that is to grab a section of the, um, of the building here and uh, grab that. We're gonna copy it and paste it 
and then move it back up into uh, this area right here. So right away you can see that the perspective is off. So if I lighten the opacity on that and then uh, do a perspective change on this, then I can get a good I can get a good lineup. Okay. So that does that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to mask this thing off here. So that's the roof. You can see there's a lot of detail on that top edge. Right now, because it's all adjustment layers, I can come back and uh, adjust that, uh, make a more detailed um, uh, mask, because I'm going to want to include all this little bits of information so it's hanging over my patch that I'm creating. Um, and then let's say I for sure want to cut up at least this high because that's where those windows are. Okay, but the idea is, is that I've made a patch that's bigger than what I need. So if I need to, uh, if I need to pull it back, um, go back and forth on the patch, I can. So with a big soft brush, what I can do is I can try to soft split uh, this into the current roof right there. Okay, let's bring that up to 100% opacity. Okay, so there's, there's our patch. Um, now what I need to do is I'm gonna try to color correct this patch to be uh, this color right here. So you can see it gets super crazy dark, but I can uh, color correct it so it matches this color right here. It's still gonna be just a little bit darker. It's not gonna be 100% white, but I, never, I don't want it to be 100% white anyways. So uh, let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer for these curves. And uh, I'm gonna darken this down. So there I was pulling in from the middle, but you can see it's uh, making it just a little bit too dark. Sometimes if you squint, if you squint at the screen, you can see uh, how dark it is, and it kind of eliminates the color information there. So it now, now that I've color corrected it, it looks a little bit blue. So if I take that down and then maybe take out a little bit of the green right there, then that kind of hits where we want it to be, okay? So... There's our patch. Now what I can do is uh, on this adjustment layer, go through and uh, kind of soft split, you know, that adjustment layer right there. Okay, so uh, with that, it still looks just a little bit, it looks a little bit odd, but uh, because I need to have um, maybe just a little bit darker uh, area just right here. That's going to say that, um, you know, that's the occlusion shadow. Um, this is kind of a larger occlusion shadow. This will be just a little bit of a smaller occlusion shadow. So if I create a, uh, a new one here and uh, just darken that up just a little bit, and then I could use a gradient... right there, then, uh, then we're getting a little more complexity in that, uh, in that shadow, okay? Okay, so what I would want to do is I'd want to go, it looks really nice over here, but it looks like it's uh, struggling over here at this point. Um, so there's a couple of different things I can do. I can maybe just cheat it a little bit here and soft split that. Uh, 
uh, always check the original because the original on this side is actually quite a bit darker uh, than this one over here. So I think that that's I think that's pretty good. So uh, it might be just a little bit blue still. So take out a little bit of that blue, a little more of that green. Bring down the color just a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so if we were to compare um, this image right here to what that is, um, obviously the mask is, um, you know, needs some help. And that's not very believable uh, to have the, our patch go on top of all those edges. But if we're just looking at the underside of this building, now we've restored uh, a bunch of detail that had been lost in the original image. Now when I go back through and uh, create my, uh, my shadow shape here, That's not a very accurate shadow shape, but just for reference purposes here. I created an adjustment layer. Now, when I darken this, you can see how uh, this reacts differently than this over here, okay? And if I turn that off, then you can see how really dark it gets and you get a doubling up of the, the shadows there. So that's how you would restore some, some information that had been lost in the original shadow and, and not double up on those shadow shapes. Last thing I want to show you um, about uh, these shadow shapes is creating the the shadow shapes that fall over um, in the right areas. So like if I do this, um, when I'm creating this line, I can really quickly go through and create something like this. But when I'm actually doing um, the shadow, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna try to follow um, this shape okay so if i cut that out and then fill it uh, with white so now when you look at that that's way more believable of how that's falling over the shape than having it be straight across there so you look at this area here where it's cutting it straight across or you look at this where it's falling over uh, that shape and it's a lot more believable. So putting in the effort to uh, put in these shadow shapes is really important and to be detailed. So you could come in here and uh, put some more extreme shadow shapes under here, you know, um, and underneath all of these surfaces um, all across here. And so uh, where you would look at this and maybe you initially uh, looked at this uh, facade of this house and you're like, oh, it's totally easy. You just go boom, boom, uh, boom. Yeah, there's your shadow. You know, that's my shadow mask. I don't need to do anything else to it. Um, but then there's all these areas in here that would need some shadow shapes too, you know, um, so that you're consistent in, in the shadows because there's going to be little things casting on the surface here. Um, again, if we take a look at this image, then um, you'll see, let's zoom in here, you'll see all these little shadow shapes, um, um, all of these shadow shapes coming up here and going across, and they're pretty intricate um, and a lot more complex than you would have first thought uh, on there, even to the point where it's going up and down, up and down, up and down through all of these, uh, these slats of wood uh, that we have here. So this is the end of our exercise 
feedback video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a, it's a lot to get through, but as you go through these exercises, you're going to learn a lot more and more about how to use Photoshop to create photo reel imagery. And I highly encourage you to go back now that you've watched this feedback video, fix all the issues that you have and get a really nice solid image and uh, do it so that you can learn the process and that you on you could do it on future things. And the, the things that you learn here, you can pour over into a new challenge and to be able to really nail that new challenge because you've learned so much here. So I highly recommend, like I said, to go through and redo your assignment and uh, learn as much as you possibly can. And I'd like to say thanks to all those who participated. It's fantastic. I love doing these DMP challenges. And, uh, and I hope that you find them informative and uh, challenging.